Hello, friends and fellow seekers. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice podcast. My name is L. Today, I shall be talking about how to process emotions. And if I could maybe just start by asking you to like the old podcast, that definitely helps us, um, you know, spread around the world a little easier. And I will try not to ask on every one, just every once in a while, and then I'll include it at the end as usual. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've been having a bit of a tough week or two week or month. I don't know what it is. Is. And, you know, I've been having trouble even coming up with some things that I would like to talk about, not feeling uh, wonderfully inspired and, and things of that wonderful nature. So I'm just here to be vulnerable and honest and just mention a few things that are on my mind about my state. So with a few things that I have written down, it's okay to feel bad. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about processing emotions. Efficient use of catalyst is rare. Uh, how feelings affect the body and the body is a creature of the mind. So if you'd like to stick around and hear some of these ramblings, I will be happy to share some of this spiritual philosophy with you as I understand it. So I think first and foremost, I just want to talk about, you know, toxic positivity is, is what I've heard it called before, and how, you know, you should just be high vibes all the time, feeling wonderful, and if you're not, you know, you're failing, you're, you're doing bad. So first of all, it is okay to feel bad. It is okay to feel your emotions. Your emotions are trying to signal something to you about some sort of maybe friction in your life that, um, you know, isn't going so smooth. In other words, you know, there may be catalyst or experience that is coming your way, trying to catalyze you to grow into the person that you are, and you may be putting up a wall against it, let's say. So, uh, you know, it's okay to feel bad. In fact, it, we talk about the service to others and the service to self path, there's sort of two ways to view the universe, if you will, and the service to self path deals with control, meaning if they have emotions come their way, they think, how may I control these emotions and funnel them into rage or, or some kind of cunning way of taking control of these emotions and, and making them serve me in a way, or, you know, maybe the emotions were caused by some other person, and it's like, instead of that letting them get them down, they think, you know, how can I use this as fuel for my fire to to get revenge and, and to control this person. So that's the negative path and uh, we are dealing with the positive path. So although it may be tempting to go into that sort of <laughs> revengeful uh, controlling thinking, what we want to do in the service to others, positive polarity path is to work with acceptance. And so with acceptance, it's never something easy to, to talk about, never something easy to digest because it's uh, always a little bit unclear as to what you're accepting and is there any end <laughs> to the path? Is this acceptance of these feelings really going to ameliorate, ameliorate them or transform them? And I think they it does happen, but it's always a little bit of a timing issue that you know, it may seem like a quick and fast way to control your catalyst and put it in its place and put it away in your mind so you don't have to think about it and, and be affected by it. But those temptations are so, and it is better to, to work with acceptance. In other words, to feel those emotions, to feel the badness, to feel the negativity in your life. And you know, I suppose find the root of it, figure out where it lays within you. What is, what is causing this friction? What is causing these feelings to crop up in your mind? Because they don't just happen to, to make you suffer, although it may feel that way, <laughs> but through suffering comes growth. If we were, if we were all just had everything we wanted all the time and everything was perfect, we, we wouldn't grow that much, right? So we have to remember that I think they say through adversity comes growth, something along those lines. And so we need to feel our emotions as they come to us. And instead of, you know, being tough and, and not crying and not being affected by them, you know, you may want to just go into it and feel it and, and see what it has to teach you about yourself. So that's what I've been trying to do <laughs> as I've been, um, you know, somewhat stressed it just it's, I mean I don't know see this is the this is the part as I'm saying it I don't completely know why I feel the way I do I have lots of 
things that I could complain about and and they may be the the source of of these feelings that are coming up you know the sort of state of society the unsurety of society the unsurety of my life and where it's going and am I just going to be stuck doing the same things I've been doing forever um, you know will I be able to you know, like achieve my dreams of sort of not being a rent slave <laughs> and, you know, all those things that you want to sort of look forward to as, as a proper vision of your life. And, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's something that we, I shouldn't be putting too much focus on. Instead, I've been finding, I've been wanting to sort of be more grateful and, and remind myself about all the things that I'm grateful for to try to sort of balance these, these negative feelings. But at the same time, I don't want to you know, force the gratefulness if I haven't dealt with the, the, the muck and the dirt of, of where these feelings truly come from. So in processing your emotions, it's never completely easy, it's never completely clear. Um, but what I have found is that if I really honestly go within and ask those questions to myself as I feel these emotions, you know, you'll get a bit of an intuitive feeling, a thought, a hint as to, you know, why this, this type of feeling is coming your way. And hopefully you have the courage and strength and the will to look at it and to not shy away and put the walls up around your heart that, you know, sort of, um, shield you from the seemingly oversensitivity of your heart as as I was just talking with somebody else a little while ago you can take your sensitivity as a gift and a curse you know these things like raw states they have those dashes in between the words a gift and a curse right so each gift so let's say uh, be sensitive and aware of other people's feelings and lives so that you may attempt to better serve them and be sensitive to your own feelings and self so that you may uh, you know sort of be the best person you can be and not be a, a blind person running around then you have this sensitivity um, you know upon you but you may consider it a bit of a burden and a curse as well because at the same time then you are sometimes over oversensitive to a lot of things and you know they can they can weigh heavy on you and so as they weigh on us that actually kind of brings up the first quote that I had found in in trying to talk about these things so in the first quote is from session 61.7 from the raw material the law of one and they talk about how feelings affect the body and they even talk about one specific person in this one the questioner Don who feels that the the heavy load that they're carrying they can't carry and therefore they they feel uh, like they have they have sore back muscles <laughs> and so you have to understand that the body is a creature of the mind and as catalyst is offered let's say to the mind and it is not accepted or it's not worked with or it's put in aside eventually after it becomes repetitive enough that catalyst is offered to the body so that one may no longer ignore Ignore it and one may you know face your catalyst and work with it uh, otherwise you know suffering shall continue so in session 61.7 the questioner asks could you give an example of how feelings affect portions of the body and sensations of the body raw answers it is nearly impossible to speak generally of these mechanisms for each entity of proper seniority has its own programming of the less aware entities we may say that the connection will often seem random as the higher self continues producing catalysts until a bias occurs i'm going to stop there a bias in other words we live in the density of choice and so this catalyst is trying to get us to choose the polarity of service to others or service to self. Continuing on, in each programmed individual, the sensitivities are far more active and as we have said, the catalyst not used fully by the mind and spirit is given to the body. Thus, you may see in this entity the numbing of the arms and the hands, signifying this entity's failure to surrender to the loss of control over the life. Thus, this drama is enacted in the physical distortion complex, in other words, the body. Continuing on, in the questioner, we may see the desire not to be carrying the load it carries, given as a physical manifestation of the soreness of those muscles for carrying used. That which is truly needed to be carried is a pre-incarnative responsibility which seems highly inconvenient. In the case of the scribe, we see a wariness and numbness of feelings ensuing from a lack of using catalysts designed to sensitize this entity to quite significant influxes of unfamiliar distortion complexes of the mental, emotional, and spiritual level. 
As the numbness removes itself from the higher or more responsive complexes, the bodily complex distortions will vanish. This is true also of the other examples. We would note at this time that the totally efficient use of catalyst upon your plane is extremely rare. End of quote. And so you can see in that quote, they talking about the three people who channeled the raw material. You have the channeler, the scribe, and the questioner. And you can they demonstrate in this one how the different catalyst or feelings that they are feeling in their life are manifesting in their bodies in various ways. So that one that I brought up before, you know, if you're feeling like you can't carry the load of life, well, my friend, you may have a sore back, <laughs> right, for the muscles used to carry your mind trying to give a symbolic awareness to the conscious part of your mind so that it may understand the catalyst and use it and hopefully have you go in a bias towards you know service to others or service to self and they talk about with i believe it's with the with the actual channeler carla they say um, that the numbing of the arms and the hands signifying this entity's failure to surrender to the loss of control of life. So this drama is enacted in the body. In other words, you're not quite putting two and two together, and therefore the body expresses that catalyst, that distortion, in hopes once again that you make the choice. Um, but I did want to highlight at that very end there that we would note at this time that the totally efficient use of callus upon your plane is extremely rare. Rare. Extremely rare, they mentioned. So that's the totally efficient use of catalyst, meaning ooh, we live in shadow land and it is fine if you don't completely understand your catalyst and your lessons. In fact, in other parts of the material coming to my mind right now, it would say that you may only begin to understand your lessons in this life. Um, it, uh, another fellow seeker reminded me earlier this week that apparently sort of the creator's plan for our lives and our lifespans are actually much longer if we were on a more harmonious planet let's say that was more aligned with the universe i'm not sure how to say it other than that but if if it was and there wasn't so much distortion on this earth we would likely live to be 700 years old or or more which means that they state that you are a spiritual child even if even if you live to the age of 100 i mean even at the very end of your life you might just begin to understand some of the spiritual influxes of your catalyst and your lessons in life and so you know it, it can be a difficult and and confusing path but that's sort of what i'm getting at is that you don't want to be so hard on yourself about not completely getting your catalyst it's okay you're you're human it's extremely rare for somebody to have a complete efficient use of their catalyst but the idea would be is that to, to, to feel those feelings you need to let down those walls of self-guilt and you need to really feel the way that you're feeling so that it can speak to you and it can it can it can teach you what it is trying to teach you and another way of saying it is that like your unconscious mind is a complete genius and it knows all your lessons and it knows everything that you need to know however it ha it can't just tell you what to do it has to to have the conscious awareness of yourself, you know, undertake it consciously as opposed to not using Catalyst at all, in which case they say, you know, you're just going to get completely random things happening to you until you start to sort of pick up the baton and start the race, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> And so with that understood, uh, we will continue on into how, we'll just sort of solidify this a bit more, how the body is a creature of the mind. They do state this in this specific quote in 5.2. So Ra mentions, the second area of learned teaching is the study understanding of the body complexes. It is necessary to know your body well. This is a matter of using the mind to examine how the feelings, the biases, what you would call the emotions, affect various portions of the body complex. It shall be necessary to both understand the bodily polarities and to accept them, repeating in a chemical physical manifestation the work you have done upon the mind bethinking the consciousness. The body is a creature of the mind's creation. It has its biases. The biological bias must be first completely understood and then the opposite bias allowed to find full expression in understanding. Again, the process of acceptance of the body as a balanced and well-polarized individual may then be accomplished." End of quote. And so, my friends, reading you that, I'm kind of getting across to you that any time your body acts up in the way it does, sure, I mean, there's a possibility there's some sort of outside influence that's creating issues with you. However, 
Um, to my understanding, they even state in a different portion of this material, which I don't have, but they, they state that if even if you were sort of in a diseased area, uh, you wouldn't really get the disease if it wasn't needed for your mind-body-spirit complex's development. In, in other words, <laughs> the body is a creature of the mind, and the things that happen to you are not on accident. They may be shrouded in mystery and veiled a bit because it's not always completely obvious as to what's going on with the body and how it links to the mind um, but that is the work of a lifetime my friends right they they state that you may only begin to understand your lessons here and that is okay um, what is important is that you accept these things and not try to you know force them into a certain type of control it is through acceptance that comes, I, I say often, transformation. And like I said before, it can take a while. There can be a bit of a time lag for your lesson that you've learned. Maybe you haven't learned it as purely or awesomely as you really think you have. And so there's the possibility that there, the, the catalyst will come around again and it will be offered to you. And that is another opportunity for you to demonstrate what you had learned the previous time the catalyst had come around. Because catalyst or experience, whatever you want to call it, you know, the lessons of life, they, they come around in a cyclical matter. And I would like you to visualize a spring in a circle, you know, like a spring, a boing boing, you know how it is in a circular fashion and it rises up as 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 it you, you go along the outside of the spring or as you trace it with your finger, let's say. Um, so I'd like to have you envision catalyst like that, where it's not that it's a 2D circle and the catalyst just comes around, strikes you again, comes around, strikes you, comes around, strikes you and you never learn. It's that the catalyst comes in 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 a circle, but in in ascending circle. So as as you the catalyst comes around again, you're hopefully have learned a lesson and you're at a higher point of consciousness. That when the catalyst comes around again, you may deal with it in a slightly more skilled manner than the previous time. And then the catalyst comes around again, and oh hey, I know that lesson. I know that catalyst. Here she comes again, and hopefully each time it becomes a little easier. And and if it's not becoming easier, well, then maybe it's that you're not picking up the lesson. It's like, you know some 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 meditation on the thought, some some conscious asking. I have to remind myself and others that you have to ask. You have to ask yourself for the answers. For those who shall knock on the door, the door shall be open to them. But if you somewhat just expect things to come to you without you putting in a bit of work for wanting to to know the answers, um, well, you you <laughs> it might take longer time because you're not fully pure in, in your seeking let's say it's, uh, it's it's not the best way to say it but you know we, we all lack purity right none of us are perfect however we are trying to be good individuals and good human beings out here <laughs> and so we want to deal with our catalyst so that we may continue on serving longer um, because another thing that I like to remind myself whenever I'm dealing with catalyst uh, I'll give you even just a really simple down-to-earth example you know say I have a toothache or something um, you think to yourself well you know like it's just about me like how does this really affect someone else and I think Ra and Quo and those guys would state something along the lines of you may see even taking care of yourself as service to others because if you take care of yourself you go to the dentist you get that tooth checked out and fixed up <laughs> you then can continue on serving in this plane longer than than you may have if you just ignored that that, that situation and so uh, it is in dealing with our catalyst that comes healing that comes healing for the body and I don't want you to think that you know if you're not dealing with your catalyst that like you wouldn't necessarily have to go to a doctor either sometimes you know doctors are healers you know often you want to be careful with thinking that this is just a chemical for chemical process and like there has nothing to do with your mind right that's where I sort of give a bit of a warning about about the the doctors and things like that but if if you're willing to understand that the body is a creature of the mind and that in dealing with your catalyst some of it some of the lessons might be that yeah you have to go and get yourself checked out and work on yourself and love yourself enough that you're willing to take care of yourself and that might be the lesson and and so you go to the doctor and they fix you up and all of a sudden you're good again right so um because <laughs> i think sometimes we envision these things like well if i just dealt with my catalyst 
list and meditated on it, then I'll wake up tomorrow and all my bodily distortions will be healed. And, you know, to what degree that's true, it, it may be true. Um, but I, I have found, <laughs> right, that because none of us are completely perfect at using our catalyst, uh, at least efficiently, then it, it's, it's okay that it can, it can be, it can happen in, in an infinite amount of ways, I suppose, is the idea, is that you don't want to shut yourself off to a certain type of healing because you envision it to be not the the proper way to deal with the issue sometimes you just have to do what you think is right and we will decide later you know what lessons we're going to pull from from the situation and if if that was the proper avenue to go down if the catalyst comes around again and it seems to be in a worse situation before well then there's a hint to you that you might have to dig a little deeper in yourself to figure out what it is that is causing the said bodily distortion or the bad feelings or or you know whatever it is that these these emotions mostly that aren't being pro that are leading to um, this sort of manifestation in the body, um, trying to get your attention, trying to get your attention. They, they mentioned in another section of the raw material, it is good, you know, this isn't a quote, but it's something along the lines of like, it is good to use one's catalyst um, to sort of avoid the board being hit to the forehead as the um, higher self tries to get the awareness, the conscious awareness of, of yourself, right? Sometimes it needs to sort of use the limiting factor, the board to the forehead when you're really not getting it. So, you know, do your best <laughs> to use your catalyst and use it wisely and not shut yourself off. You, we, we often will build those walls up around our hearts to protect our hearts because we've been damaged before and, you know, you've had somebody hurt you when you've been vulnerable. And so you think, you know, I'm going to be a hard hard shell and I'm going to going to protect myself and that's okay your body and your mind did that for a time because that was maybe what you needed to do to survive the situation but you know the future the future comes comes forth for you and you can't have that wall up around your heart forever you need to let the let the wall down and you need to process your emotions and so you know, me as a guy, you know, I am a bit more um, balanced in my feminine aspects, so maybe this is harder for other people. So I I'll just mention that, you know, like us guys, we don't always cry so much, <laughs> but it's okay to to give a good cry sometimes. Sometimes, you know, in that real depth of darkness and emotion and expressing it, you, you'll come to feel, A, relieved, and, and you'll probably be getting hints as to where these feelings are coming from because sometimes it's only in the expression of them that we have a sort of resonance in the mind as to where that you know that vibration started with in the first place sometimes you really got to go and feel it you got to feel the bad you got to cry you got to process those emotions and and feel it so that you can step into another day and not just hold on to that catalyst forever and ever until it you know tries to manifest and give you know, get your attention in a way that isn't particularly fun, because we all know that dealing with ourselves and our health and all that stuff, it, it can be challenging as, as one thing leads to the other, especially the older you get. I it was in my youth at one time. I'm still quite youthful. I'm 34. Um, but, but as I get older, I find that you don't get that grace that maybe you used to get as a child. Like, as I got older, I started to deal with um, types of anxiety anxiety. I didn't understand that's what it was. And then I looked into it and myself and I figured out that, oh yeah, there was a few experiences that happened to me in my late 20s um, that sort of bittered me and had you know, I had I had been hurt in certain ways, and so I had um, created certain types of biases and distortions in myself that needed to be looked at. And the reason, I guess, I suppose, because I wasn't looking at them, they're manifesting in a variety of ways, and anxiety 
um, which comes with a lot of negative, harsh feelings, which then eventually translates to the body as the body becomes weak and sick and, and all of your weak points, all the little chinks in your armor, as they say, um, can be magnified and can be sort of made worse. Um, and you don't see, so basically, you just don't get so much grace as, as you get a little bit older and, and you don't get away with it as much. You become more conscious of yourself and you become more able to process your emotions and, and you, so you have that responsibility to do it, is the way that I see it. And so, my friends, it is, is tough out there, as, as I state, and um, if I would maybe just share a bit about my personal self, I mean, I don't really exactly know where these feelings come from. They're all, basically, what I'm feeling right now is just a bit overwhelmed with everything, overwhelmed with life, with, like, circumstances, family, friends, roommates, my direction in life, the my my vices that I deal with, that I, I'm try, try to, you know, be a better person and get rid of these vices. Um, just many, many things that seem to crowd my vision right now that, that don't make it extremely easy to see the light and the love of the situation. Um, however, you know, and, and that was why I was even considering skipping again this week's podcast, because it's like, well, I don't want to come on here and just spread a bunch of negativity to everybody and, and be bitter. And, and you know, that's not what I'm here to do. I, I am here to attempt to serve. And, and so I want to inspire. But then at the same time, I don't want to be that toxic positivity that is only out here telling you guys all the wonderful things of life and, and how, you know, I'm always so good and, and high vibe and I meditate every day and uh, and you know I'm a perfect example so uh, that's that's that toxic positivity of social media where people don't want to share the bad days and I don't share these negative sort of bad feelings with you to to get empathy from you and uh, naturally I will because a lot of you that listen are just very wonderful people and you're just trying to make me feel better and you maybe send me messages and stuff and and I really appreciate it, but I, you know, that is not particularly why I'm doing this. I'm just doing it to demonstrate, um, you know, authenticity, vulnerability with myself. I feel like as I can come on here and explain these things and admit them honestly, that it may hopefully help you admit and see the truth of yourself and your catalyst and and your your life lessons and and so that's why I'm here <laughs> and that's what I'm doing here today and that's why this is probably going to be a shorter podcast because yeah I was just feeling um not particularly wonderful but in processing those emotions I had a good cry this morning felt good <laughs> after like I felt like very hopeless and lost this morning and then after I did some of that I was able to reflect and then I was able to, to get myself up and, you know, shower and eat and, and take care of myself and go sit in the sun and do my work um, that I need to do because I, you know, I have a job and stuff too. Uh, <laughs> and so I did all that. And all of a sudden, here we are and we're, you know, a little more than halfway through the day and I'm starting to feel, feel better as I dealt with those emotions and tried to process that catalyst and, and just went into it, just got deep in the darkness there for a moment. Um, but there is light at the end of the tunnel my friends and so uh you know there is hope and i hope that you see that and i hope that uh, my strength gives you a bit of strength as inspiration and know that i'm out here doing my best and sometimes i fail and sometimes i feel like i can't do it and i want to give up but i just i don't know why i just i just persist i persist because it just every time i do uh seems to be rewarded in in one way or another there's always a time lag sometimes in the reward and i don't do it for the reward but the universe will speak to you as you consciously attempt to be a good person and serve others and take care of yourself uh, the universe will give you feedback that yes this is a good thing to do my friend and so i leave you with that 
I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. As I said at the beginning, if you could like the podcast, make sure you subscribe. You can always leave a comment. And uh, yes, I seek to do all of this in a freely give, freely receive fashion, for this is the nature of the law of one philosophy. They state, your service, was it freely given? And (laughs) so I attempt to do what I do in a freely giving way. And um, if you would like to jump on the freely receive train on this end, you can do that at www.theoneinfinitecreator.com and you just scroll down a little bit till you see the support section and you can jump on my Patreon. That helps me to do this in a more long-run fashion, gives me that stability that I need um, to, to sort of make the choices that I need to make in life that are in the area of service. It makes it a lot easier and you, you, you guys are helping in that. You are a part of this law of one. It's not just me. I have all you wonderful people helping me out and I'm extremely grateful for that as especially as the first of the month comes up with the whole Patreon thing which 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 shall be coming out of your accounts shortly so thank you guys so much I, I I do appreciate it I love you guys and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week take care